It is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022. This is a regular monthly board meeting of the Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority. It is 4.06 p.m. and this meeting is called to order. Mr. Lawrence, any letters or communications to the board? Uh, not this month, Mr. Chairman. Approval of board minutes, May 19th, 2022. Okay, secretary has approved them. Is there a motion to accept the minutes as submitted? I'll make that motion. It's been made. Is there a second? second. I'll second. second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those minutes are approved. Reports, committee reports, finance committee. Well, Mr. Coffin? I, I wonder whether we could uh, start the report just by asking Patty Nisco to uh, touch base on uh, things that might be pertinent uh, with the financial report. Okay, very good, sir. Uh, if we look at the statement of financial position, you'll note our accounts receivable are $263,000. That's 88.4% of the open AR is either current or one to 30 days. So we are collecting it almost as fast as it's being billed, which is a good thing. If we go down to construction and progress, you'll note that construction and progress is at 10 million now. If in February, it was at 30 million. At the end of our fiscal year, we moved the Tiger Grant bridge repair and painting into fixed assets just above. And we also moved some of the lagging um, snow removal equipment for the airport out of there and put that also into fixed assets. Our account payable regular is 622,000. New York State retirement is 169. And all project AP is at 63,000. Of the 622,000, uh, just over 200,000 belongs to the wind turbine project right now. And as soon as that chip money starts coming in, it should be later this week, all of those invoices will be paid. Any questions on the statement of financial position? We go to the April budget to actual. You'll notice that our revenue, except for fuel sales, was down a bit for the month of April. We had, we have um, gradually, we are bringing the bridge traffic revenue up to 60% of pre-pandemic levels. I think with the restrictions just coming off April 1st, we didn't see quite the um, increase that we had hoped for April, but with Victoria Day, Mother's Day, Memorial Day in May, I, the whole business that we'll start to see those, those increases coming closer to where we had hoped. <clears throat> Our expenses for the most part are either pretty much on target or under budget, which is always a good thing. General expenses for the airport, you will notice is over budget. Um, security for the airport was at 22,000 for the month. We had budgeted approximately 18. And MAPCO, our parking, <clears throat> we had hoped that we would start seeing more um, parking revenue coming in to offset what we owe MAPCO, but we are quite there yet. So that is um, that is MAPCO's uh, payments that we have to cover. If you look at a marine terminal maintenance expense of that nine thousand dollars over, just over six thousand belongs to tarp removal which is billed back to the salt companies, but it is an expense on our books at the moment. We had to upgrade our scale house software and that was $2,800. Uh, under general expenses, 
You'll note under the marine terminal that is 72,000 over budget. Of that 72 over budget, 75,000 belongs in the wind turbine product. So we have to move that out of regular board activity to the wind turbine project, which will bring that line under budget. Are there any questions on the budget to actual? Patty, could you uh, brief us on the status of the, the audit and the preparation of the year end statement? The audit went very well. Uh, the auditors were here for uh, three and a half, four days in house. The um, New partner for the auditors is out of the country this week. We had hoped to have the audited financials this week, but we should have the draft financials next week. And they would like to do a special board meeting so that we can review those, do the presentation that they normally do. Uh, the financial should be done by the 20th of June. Uh, I, we're very pleased with with this year's audit. It went it went quite smoothly. Anything else? Oh, right now we're doing the Paris reporting. <laughs> that, we're ahead of the game on that from the previous years. Yep. <clears throat> Outstanding. Well, a couple of things I'd like to relate to to board members. Sure. <clears throat> We did start a discussion in our finance committee meeting uh, that we want the whole board to participate in. When we were looking at the year-to-date figures, we noted the uh, important role that programs like the Payroll Protection Act played during the pandemic. And without those programs, we wouldn't have been able to maintain the current level of operation. And as the programs wind down, we really do look for a recovery in bridge traffic, in passenger traffic at the airport, and so on. But even a return to pre-pandemic traffic levels would leave us short on revenue to maintain or expand facilities, and it would cramp staffing levels. Uh, we believe that a successful operation for the authority calls for increased revenues in the next few years. Our decision to restore the industrial developer position to hire a consulting firm for the airport, marketing the airport, and increasing the capacity and the efficiency of the port, these are all going to help drive revenue. But rather beyond addressing that gap between revenue and operating expenses, uh, we additionally have to fund maintenance and equipment replacement. And the authority over the years has not done that well. We also have an interest in new projects. We've talked about needing another building in the industrial park and improving the uh, pier at the port. And those projects may, we may find substantial grant funds, but it will always call for local money. And our current plans, they look really sound through the current budget year. And probably we're on a good trajectory for the year after, but we will have to watch the results and respond if they fall short. The particular times for us to review our plans and the results are as we adopt budgets. In particular, we look for robust discussions of projections of revenue and see whether we are making progress on revenue. But at every meeting, as we make spending decisions through the year, we have to consider the impact on our long-term goal of trying to match revenue and expenses. And I, I think that it would be uh, excellent to the degree that we're able to, to know when expenses are within the budget and when they are additional outside the budget items. So when possible, if we could, if you could tell us as you bring proposals to us. And also as we 
get revenue reports, if we could know whether or not we're on track toward the budgeted revenues. So uh, we pass that on. We t and, and I think this is serious stuff that we really want to address because we don't want to uh, put ourselves in a position where we run low on operating cash and have to make drastic changes without additional planning as we move along. I think that's the report, unless there's discussion of some of these things. Well, I think it's always good, uh, Chris, when um, you know you go through all that with Patty and Steve and uh, bring it all to light that whenever we do anything at all at this table, we consider how it affects the overall operation of the authority and uh, you know again put that in the perspective of looking at the the budget whenever we do it uh, keep in mind that we all know uh, we're fortunate to have uh, our elected officials help us out during COVID uh, but that's going to run out um, so to look ahead when that money is no longer available and and how we move forward to do what our mission is here I think it's always important. So um, thank you and, and, and Dave and everyone else on staff who works on looking those numbers and anticipating what's coming down the line. Um, and certainly as we move forward, something we're all gonna have to uh, consider every resolution, every step we make, every plan we put in place uh, from here on out. Well. <clears throat> Speaking for myself, I, I think that cost control is important. But I also think that uh, driving revenue, it, it just raises the ante for us to understand and uh, try to figure out ways. I mean, I have heard ideas and I recognize them and appreciate them. And I think that we are need to sort of double down on how do we make this operation perk. So I think we'll have to throw in what ideas and, and oversight we can. And it's clear, I think, that everybody on the staff, this is a pretty good staff these days. Yes. And it's working well. Yes. But uh, we need to know how you're doing in relation to, to the goals that uh, we've, we've got laid out and uh, know when it's working and know when it's not working. Right. That will become more and more important, I think, with the facility committee because you deal with the airport and, and the port and everything else. Um, again, as Chris says, regarding how do we increase revenue. Yeah. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Any other comments, Nicole? I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thank you. Is, is Tony online yet? Tony, do you hear that report? Oh uh, yeah, I've been here. Um, I don't have any questions. I just want to say thanks for the thorough report and for giving us a heads up of what's coming up and what to think about. So thank you. Good. Anything else, Chris? No, nope. all set. Thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> Move on the bridge traffic report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just going to really talk numbers, but um, kind of in line with what Patty said as they relate to revenue. But uh, May's numbers um, were uh, much better if you compare them to last year. I mean, I'll start with a really great number. <laughs> you see the 248% increase, but um, you know, it's, you're dealing with 2021, which was an extremely poor uh, crossing number. Um, but um, the good news is in May, um, traffic was down 47% of uh, 2019's number, and uh, truck traffic was off just 8%. Um, so uh, I think 
truck traffic's kind of holding its own. And as Patty said, we're seeing a you know a slow uh, uptick in returning traffic. There's a lot more to uh, what travelers are experiencing um, and and what they see in the economic environment on both sides. So um, it, it'll be a new, uh, it's just a new uh, environment that we'll be working in and just see when traffic finally, um, if it does, returns to 2019, 2019 numbers. Uh, then when the major one we look at is revenue. You know, we were off almost $110,000 over, uh, you know, an, an average year of, uh, 2019 and then when you start looking at these summer numbers um, some of the summer numbers for uh, 2019 are close to 300 250 300,000 crossings and I uh, you know we'll, we'll see hopefully uh, you know if we can keep that percentage going um, I think it'll work well with our budget with, with what we've anticipated so um, overall um, we'd like to see more but um, it's uh, it's positive um, numbers. So, um, are there any questions on uh, the bridge traffic report? Nicole? What do we currently charge for a bridge crossing? What is it? Three. 325 American, 425 Canadian, four cars. Three truck okay. depends on that. We need a lot of quarters <laughs> for change. How does that compare with the bridges at Thousand Islands and Cornwall? It's, Cornwall uh, is three. Three, but I think TI were right there with them. Mm -hmm. They might be a little bit higher. So we can't push that from a competitive mm -hmm. position where... No, but actually I, in some ways, I, you know, when you're talking you're not talking changing your rates massively. Um, I don't, you know, you're really, it's not an outright competition. I, I don't see, you know, if we went up a quarter or 50 cents, I, I don't know how much that would impact our traffic. Um, but like with truck traffic, it matters if you change your truck rates and things like that. But um, Didn't we increase 50 cents three years ago? Yes. Yes. And you know, I mean, we we won't talk about that no. there. But um, you know, every now and then we have to reevaluate. It's a good question to ask. We have to reevaluate, um, you know, what it costs to run the bridge and, and things sure. like that. But so we we can leave that question we're a, to be. Yeah, we're, it's not a um, it's not an issue right now. I don't. Mm -hmm. think. Um, you know what I'm wondering about. Uh, Steve, you attend regional labor council meetings. Um, do they talk about uh, trying to increase uh, marketing and tourism in our region? Yeah. Well, With the Canadian tourists? Yeah, and we've actually, we have our, our tradable sectors, um, kind of uh, our own group, and we focus on cross-border um, Business and that involves uh, that involves you know industry. It involves the universities. It involves uh, uh, tourism and things like that. And um, we haven't met. Uh, we will be meeting later this month. And and we what we do is we kind of uh, consolidate and distill some of uh, the things that we want to do, and then we move them up to uh, the, the regional council. Um, there. I'm new to it, so I've only been through a little bit of that, but mm -hmm. um, I, we do, uh, and being on that for us, I mean, we actually do some of the things that we want others to do, and then also we also make, uh, we try to make it easier for business um, to be able to, uh, you know, work across borders each way. Right. Anthony, you've attended some of the Chamber of Commerce meetings. What do they discuss regarding uh, cross-border travel? Yeah, there's um, some activities coming up this summer that they're going to be attending over in Montreal and Ottawa and things like that. 
So I'd like to tap into those opportunities and kind of piggyback off of, off of the kind of joint efforts to try to say um, with the chamber more tourism related, especially with the new airline coming in, mm -hmm. getting that word out. So things like that. Good. Anthony, do you participate in chamber activities in Canada? Uh, not yet, but I will be. Yep. Um, there's also economic development organizations or essentially mm -hmm. sister organizations right along the river uh, um, identifying contacts mm -hmm. and we'll be reaching out and trying to uh, to build that relationship. They obviously want companies in their district in their areas, but if it's beneficial to their companies, their home-based companies have a U.S. presence, we certainly want to be top of the list. Sure. Have you thought of uh, making a contact in the U.S. Embassy up in Ottawa? That's a very good point. I don't know who you go through, mm -hmm. Steve. Maybe you know, but uh, there is a business development officer in the, in the yeah. U.S. Embassy there. It, it might uh, be a good day for you. We may who um one of the senators' offices. Yes, who we may um pinpoint it. Good contact uh, list. Yeah, we can probably go in the morning. It's a It's going to be raining, so we we'll go over. <laughs> um, no, those contacts are important, I think. Uh, the regional council, <clears throat> and Anthony, what you do with the chambers um, here in the county. Uh, you know, I know there's always something going on. I think it's, it's good for the authority for us to have a presence so they know we're here to work with them because it benefits not only us, but them too, so good. What is your level, um, Anthony, of do you, like attendance or with the St. Lawrence County Chamber? Uh, How exactly are you connected? Once a board member. Yeah, oh, the St. Lawrence Chamber, so I'm a board member, oh, and it's good. Uh, once a month. Okay. Are the meetings. How are they doing as far as marketing the events happening here in Canada? Radio spots? social media do you know so at the the last idea meeting they do i learned that the chamber does have tv spots over in canada okay it's kind of like a co-op situation to where the local companies can buy into advertising on the canadian front so after that meeting i wanted to learn mm -hmm. more about right. what maybe we could tap into or some right. activities so because we're doing there's certain things we're doing here and there's other things they're doing, right. what can we kind of partner right. on and, and save a lot of money? Yeah, even like, you know, we had the barbecue mm -hmm. recently, and I, I know that there has been, I don't know the, the specifics of how the chambers have merged, mm -hmm. but they, they and have. still in the process. Okay. Because all of those things will be, I think, really important to, to market across the border. There's a giant, you know, craft show in Madrid that draws lots and lots of people that, yeah, just I just think to really have your hand on that yeah. is, is yeah. good. Because really the chamber that's for tours and activities, that's mm -hmm. what I would like to go high on. Is mm -hmm. there I mean they have a good presence and right. and the marketing materials they put out is is good. Yeah. You know, okay. Know, Anthony's done some contact with the chamber concerning the new rollout of our air carrier. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. yeah. But that that's highly important to us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, I'm thinking bridge traffic too, you know, exactly. just getting people, yeah. so all of it, but right, the, the, air, the airlines will be so important. Okay, thank you. Chris? All sounds good, I'm in support. <laughs> Nicole? All set, thank you. Tony? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, let's move on to the uh, airport activity and occupancy report, please, Stephanie? Okay, as you can see, the airport passenger activity is up this month, which has been great. Um, I think that that's due to the fact that they are providing the flights to Chicago. So we, we do have some passenger traffic, um, an uptake in that. I hope it continues. Uh, the, the flights will go through June, and then, of course, Contour Airlines starts July 1. Uh, with their with their traffic to um, or with their flights to Philadelphia. Now, um, 
the occupancy report right now our hangers are full good do you have any any questions any other comments have we updated the marquee yet the marquee was updated over the weekend no it's been up it's updated now today wasn't over the weekend. I was out there Sunday and it still showed okay, uh, then, sky glass. Then Monday. Monday? Yeah. And we're starting. Do we have the information from Contour? No, I spoke with them again today. Their graphics person had quit and today is their graphics person's first day. And I've been online with, I've been, <laughs> I've talked to her twice today and they hope to give me the proper information um, in the proper format so we can get it on the digital signs and have it ready for the news media and the website as soon as possible. I told her I needed it three days ago. Have they mentioned, um, are there people booking flights? I have not talked to them about that. Um, what I did do is I did some random checking on my own looking, booking mm -hmm. flights yep. and several of them only two fl only two seats left, or only three seats left. So I'm hopeful. I know people are booking, but they've told me. Yes. Um, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> state it right here that an individual I know has had an issue visiting his son in El Paso, and uh, he booked flight out of here in August, so couldn't qualify for that low rate for July. Um, and by flying out of here, going to Philadelphia, and then on to, well, he'd end up in El Paso. And it's $250 cheaper here than it is in flying out of Syracuse. Yes. So, there. Yes, and <laughs> I, I have had comments uh, from Ottawa flying from Ottawa to, I believe, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, their their rate is three hundred and fifty dollars to get to Philadelphia. So us at sixty, I believe sixty nine is the starting price without the uh, the introductory rate. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's substantial difference. Good, good. You can now if we're picking up more Canadian travelers or not at this point. No, not at this point. Yeah. Okay. But I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Contour and the 12 flights a week. And there's schedule of flights in and out of here. It's certainly a lot better than we've had for the past year. And uh, it will be nice to see uh, people getting on board and taking that flight to Philadelphia and connecting to everywhere else in the world. Yes, and with the convenient flight times. Yes. 8.15 yeah. in the morning yes. and uh, 4 in the afternoon. <clears throat> it works very well with the, the flights going from Philadelphia to other places and also coming back this direction. Uh, it works very, very well. So I can leave here at 4 o'clock go to Philadelphia and be in Denver at 9.15. Nice. Really nice. Because I have a family wedding coming up, so I checked it out. Mm -hmm. so it was quite, the, the price was very reasonable. Mm -hmm. No, the game would be over by then. Don't have one. Stephanie, what, what days of the week? I know 12 flights per week, but are they playing seven days? They're flying seven days a week, uh, yeah. one flight on Tuesday and one flight on Saturday. Those are the slowest okay. business days or days of the week to right. okay. for passengers. Yes. Yes. That marquee change. Right, my nuts. Uh, Chris, anything? Nope. Sounds, sounds like good progress. There you go. Ben? No, I, thank you. Tony, anything? For Stephanie? No, thanks, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Nicole? Just
No, I think I'm all set. I did have some of those kind of logistical questions too. I've just done a, you know, I know a lot of people use like things like kayak and stuff when they're searching for flights and I've tried to go on there and look and nothing pops up. So I just was wondering, um, you know, how we go about making sure that, you know, we, we need to market ourselves if we can't be found. I think, you know, the streamlined ways that people technically or typically use um, technology to look for the fastest cheapest flight that they can find. Um, if we can't market ourselves on there, then we definitely need to circumvent and figure out a way to be, um, to let people know that we are an option. Um, because that's, I mean, I, I, I am one of those people that always just goes to like, you know, Expedia or Priceline or Kayak or cheap flights and we're not on any of those. Um, so I think we're missing a huge market there. All right, that's, uh, that's your job and Tony's job to tell me what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, I'll, I'll find out. There you go. That's something their marketing team will should be doing, right? Yes. Okay. They're responsible for that. But, uh, Make note of it. They told yeah. me that they were be, they would be on all of those. Okay. I don't even know. Okay, so maybe. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, so maybe, Stephanie, if you can just check with them. I know it's early on, but, you know, I know people book flights ahead of time that, you know, a lot of families, especially if you're booking around a vacation, you don't wait until last minute. You know, we, I know we're looking to take a vacation um, for Thanksgiving vacation. Um, so we're already looking to book flights. So if people just don't see it as an option, they'll choose something else quickly, not thinking to, to hold off. So whether it's a press release, you know, to let people know the options are going to be coming or, you know, whatever, just so people don't book ahead of time. Okay. Um, what did you look at on in particular? Expedia. I looked on kayak. Kayak. Okay. okay. Yep, and it says no results found. For Ogdensburg? Yes. Okay. I will check that. So okay. kayak was something that you did. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Expedia is a big one. Yeah. Um. Also, I know we will we won't have another board meeting until you know into July, but will you send an email or we'll get information about the first flight about getting to the airport? Yes. Okay. Yes, the guest list is being finalized right now for the invitations to go out very soon. Okay. Good. Very good. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else from anyone? No. All right. Board activity report. Lawrence, I don't Anthony, have a doing paper uh, port activity report for you, but it's all about wind turbines. Oh. And uh, we, the last five weeks, we've done four ships. And um, when we tallied everything up at the end of the month, it was our best revenue concerning wind turbines. So um, we're doing something right there. And it's encouraging. I think overall this year will be, or the wind turbine goes um, by the end of September, it'll be very uh, a healthy, uh, healthy uh, season for us. Um, we expect we are we have uh, loaded out um, four out of the 22, and we expect um, we'll move that up to four or five a week come next week. So by the time what we have in there now, by the time we get the next ship in, um, everything will be gone. So that's a relief as far as um, having enough property mm -hmm. storage there. Um, and we are we are gonna be storing two projects, which we've never done before. Um, one with Vestas and the other with GE Energy. So, well, a wind, GE Wind, excuse me. So um, come uh, the end of next week, we'll see the GE wind blades, and then we'll right after that we'll see another Vestas um, tower ship. So we'll be active for at least six or seven days, just offloading the ships. Which um, having two customers has been unique. So there'll be a lot of uh, cranes and a lot of people involved in that. Um, we look forward to it. Um, I don't. I'm not nervous about any of that because. Um, We've been at it long enough, I think, so we feel comfortable enough, but we won't take our eyes off the uh, off the ball on this one. Um, but it's been good. Grain has been uh, active, mostly um, coming in for storage, which is good. Um, not a lot going out um, there. It's all coming in by rail. And then uh, we're looking for some fall um, 
projects um, as they relate to maybe wood pellets. Um, that's looking positive and uh, how it relates to the whole energy market in Europe. Um, that's a world issue and, um, you know, we come right down where locally it affects what we do. Mm -hmm. So um, a good thing. So um, any questions on what I've just said? You know what I'd like to see? Every 15 days, if you could tell me how much income is generated by the workers down at the port? Is that possible? Yeah. You can give me a rough number from payroll, right? Now let's say from June, uh, let's go to May 1. Let's do May 1 to May 30. Then I want to see June 1 to June 15. And we'll get that out. Because mm -hmm. I think from what you just said, that's got to be a substantial amount of money that our port is putting into the community. Do you want auxiliary um, labor too? Of, you know, yes. The crane operator. If the port wasn't driver. there, right. right? So whatever income is generated down there, I think we need to let that information be known. Because yep. that's a huge engine in the North Country economy, is the income that's generated down at that port. Mm -hmm. Daily, you have uh, escort trucks, and you Absolutely. also have uh, a group of um, state troopers yes. that escort them that are assigned to each piece that the heavy, super heavy lifts that go out of here. So, and I've seen one of those blades go out, <laughs> and I can tell you, those people that do the escort and the state police do one hell of a job because that is massive. Yeah. They do a good job. It, and when you get behind one, at least, um, they go along not at 60 miles an hour, but 45 to 50. No. And having the trooper in the front and the back um, keeps everybody in line with, uh, you know, you don't, they're out on their own and people uh, dangerously uh, right. taking chances. So Very, very well done. Yeah. yeah. If that's possible, Patty, that information needs to get out. All right, anything else on port? Nicole? Tony? Chris? Ben? I'll, I'll stop. Okay. I don't have any questions. I'm glad to hear everything is going well with the windmill project. Okay, good. Thank you, Tony. Anthony, you're Thanks, up. Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, occupancy report for Commerce Park is maintaining, uh, holding steady from last board meeting. Um, with that in mind, there will be some vacancies coming up uh, in early fall. So, the bulk of my activities has been ensuring that by early fall, the report looks the same. So, <laughs> uh, so that's the activities. We have a couple of showings for some upcoming available space this week. Uh, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to, uh, between reshuffling and, and new tenants, we should be able to maintain uh, a full Commerce Park campus. Excellent. Um, Anthony's also working on some outside ideas that he has for some of the space that's remained. Uh, it hasn't been rented there, but um, kind of ties in with the working environment right now. And, uh, um, I'm pleased with the way that he's uh, kind of uh, researching that, um, and I think you're, I think uh, done correctly, it'll it'll pan out. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just a different way of looking at some of the spaces that we've had that um, either I or Patty really we have, in the last few years just haven't had the time to uh, delve into that kind of stuff. Good. Promoting just so you know, just how it relates to the working environment. You, you know, temporary office space and things like that. So we really could, there could be a multiplier on some of the, uh, uh, the space of, you know, the numbers and how we, how we rent that out, but it's more of a, you know, temporary thing, but right. Uh, right. Um, he's headed in the right direction on that. Yeah. Good. And then also companies that would add to the kind of uh, friendly ecosystem of the Commerce Park campus. It's not just a place to come to do your job, but what are those amenities around that that would make your life better? So, mm -hmm. like Good. the yeah. child care center, mm -hmm. ideally in the future, what else can we do? 
walking path with lights and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Anything else? Anyone? No? Let's move on. Any unfinished business, Mr. Lawrence? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Under business items, we have nothing under general administration, nothing under bridge. bridge. Commerce Park. Okay. Approval of lease supplement number seven with Corning, agenda item C1. Yes, perfect. So staff has negotiated lease supplement number seven with Corning Incorporated for 15,000 square feet of commercial warehousing space and building four at the Port of Ogdensburg for a one-year period commencing September 1st, 2022 and terminating August 31st, 2023 at a rate of $2.58 per square foot, equaling $3,225 per month. 38700 per year, including utilities. Uh, Corning Incorporated shall have the right to terminate this lease upon 90 days written notice to the authority. Corning Incorporated shall have the first option to renew this lease for a period of no less than one year, provided such intent to exercise option is made by May 1st of 2023. Uh, Corning Incorporated shall also be giving a, given a period of 30 days to cure a default for lack of payment. All of the terms and conditions of the original lease agreement shall remain in full force and effect and are hereby ratified and affirmed. Thank you. Resolution is before you. Is there a motion? I'll so move. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Mayor Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Manelli? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Then to item C2, approval of lease supplement number three with Lincare Incorporated. Yes. Uh, staff has negotiated lease supplement number three with Lincare Incorporated for 7,356 square feet of commercial office space in building one at the Commerce Park campus for a five year period commencing January 1st, 2022 and terminating December 31st, 2026, at the rates outlined in the below table. Uh, so what that table shows is each year, there's a graduated increase in rental per square foot. Uh, when Care Incorporated is responsible for its prorated share of all utilities, all of the terms and conditions of the original lease agreement shall remain in full force and effect and are hereby ratified and affirmed. Thank you. Resolution is before you. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. motion. I'll second. <laughs> Made and seconded. Is there any discussion? I see it. Uh, price per square foot increases uh, each year. It's good. They've been there with us for five years already? Yeah. In that location? Yes. Huh? Good. I also yeah. like that it's renewed for five years. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Motion has been made and seconded. No further discussion. Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. Mr. Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Coffin. Yes. Then the item E1. Yes. We'll have a lease agreement with Woodcrest Dairy LLC. Staff has negotiated a lease agreement with Woodcrest Dairy LLC for approximately 42 acres of vacant land consisting of 15 acres east of Echo, approximately 28 acres on the Wagner Road. For a period commencing May 1st, 2022 and terminating November 30th, 2022 at a rate of $40 per acre or $1,680 for the lease period. In addition, the lease gives the authority the option to cancel the lease with 60 days notice should the need arise that a major industrial project requires the acreage. Also included this in, the in this agreement is the requirement for Woodcrest Deli Dairy LLC to provide proof of appropriate insurance coverage to the authority naming the Augensburg Bridge and Port Authority as an additional insurer. Thank you. Resolution before you, is there a motion? I'll 
I'll so move. Made. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? I just was going to say, is it just the short, it's growing season? Okay. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, that must be like corn season. Okay. Corn. <laughs> Anything else? Maddie and Rico, the roll, please. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Any other such matters, Mr. Lawrence? Um, just wanted to mention that I had Anne Marie reach out to the child care committee, and I believe you're scheduled to the 16th. The 16th. So Nicole and Tony, um, I don't know if you've seen that yet, but um, I just wanted to update you that um, I have reached out to the Ark of Jefferson in St. Lawrence County, and. Uh, with Lynn Piotrowski, um, we touched base um, yesterday and uh, we we were going to uh, meet with, uh, um, try to get a meeting with the uh, um, Empire State Development down in Watertown with Mr. Steve Hunt. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't know it yet, but that's what we're, <laughs> we're, we're trying to do. And, uh, um, we just want to look at the fund opportunities and see that um, maybe um, it's in our interest that as partners that maybe uh, the possibility of, that the ARC be the applicant for some of these applications with us partnering with them. Um, so um, I just want to bring the committee up to speed and also um, start to make a push on uh, um, make a, a you know um, kind of re-energize our, our efforts on the child care. I know um, lack of funding has kind of uh, put us on hold um, with that, but um, um, we, we uh, haven't forgotten, you know, what our mission is on this. And uh, I think um, um, I can update you and we can talk some more at a committee meeting. And uh, Patty reminds me also that there will be a special board meeting to discuss the audit. So um, one way or another, that'll either be virtual or in person um, there, but it's something that's required that, um, right. um, and I have, uh, um, we've made the governor's office aware there that um, the auditors need to make a presentation to our board. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm sorry, 16, what time? 3.30 to 4.00. Thank you. You had more? No, that's it. Just some reminders. Okay. Anyone uh, concluding comments from board members, authority staff? Jennifer got anything? The press on the line. I don't know if there's any press on, but I did want to mention, sorry, while we were going through, I did go um, onto Google just to look at flights, and it looks like you can book things through Contour slash American Airlines as an interline through um, November of, uh, the mid-November. Mid so I'm wondering if Contour maybe has a five-month window. So Stephanie, maybe if you could find that out for us, maybe that's, you know, some airlines do a certain window you can only book so far out. Yes, right now they're booking through November 15th. They're finalizing their winter schedule, and the schedules will tend to be about six months in advance, and we should know relatively soon after November 15th what the winter schedule will be, and they'll be booking for that. Excellent. So that might be a good thing if press is on <laughs> to just let people in the community know um, that if they don't see flights, not to panic, that they'll be available. Um, so to consider Ogdensburg as their first choice, not a not a second or a third. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. All right. No one? Nothing? Nobody wants to say anything bad about anybody? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. No Can't do that. <laughs> Down to three teams, you know. <laughs> Next meeting day, uh, July 14th. Tony, how's that uh, July 14th for you? 
Um, so far, it looks pretty good, but my work schedule is kind of up in the air right now. So uh, it might change, but for for now, that date and time looks good. Okay. Anyone else have an issue with that? I am not Nicole? available. Well, you're off for the summer, right? Well, I know. So my summers get full. Now I have a my, my final administrative course, uh, the Summer Institute, is that week. So Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 7.30. Those are, those are easy. <laughs> I can jump on for sure for the first 30 minutes, but I wouldn't be there for um, the rest of it. Okay. We just won't let Jen ask too many questions. <laughs> Chris, that good for you? Yes, that's good. Jen? Yes. Dave? <laughs> <laughs> all right we're good for july 14th at 4 p.m um so lawrence is there a need for executive session oh no mr chairman all right in light of that is there a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion motion's been made second and second all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. you want to pose <laughs> we stand adjourned thank you Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.